On today's show, a lot, a lot of news to break down, especially talking about quarterbacks. And as usual, the studs, the duds, subscribe right now and don't miss a moment. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast for Monday, October 30th. We're getting ready. Almost time. Halloween show tomorrow. We have some special stuff in store. It should be fun. You excited for that one, Andy? Not really. <laughs> oh, what? Not I mean I I'm excited for the uh, the listeners and watchers, I guess, to right. uh That's what it's all about, man. Enjoy the what's going to happen. Yeah. But I'm do not you excited regret to... your choice. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, That's I regret I my I regret my choice because my choice. I mean, I'm obviously I put a lot into the show and I'm willing to sacrifice for the for the mm-hmm. greater good and yeah. that's why i'm doing it you're you're really the champion of that for but the, for for the three of us yeah i mean many times that's been evident but we me and jason would look up to you oh man. much much reverence such esteem yeah such esteem Andy. it's just what a guy some costumes cost <laughs> cost a lot what, not money what did it cost but time, everything but time <laughs> and uh you just can't get some things back yeah yeah. Uh, but I that, look forward to your sacrifice. Is that not a good tease or what? I mean, <laughs> make sure you uh, go to YouTube, youtube.com yep. slash the fantasy footballers. Uh, and you'll enjoy it tomorrow. Subscribe, click the bell. Uh, 12,000 of you tuned in for Sunday Live to do the late morning dance. There was some good, some bad. There's some wild things that happened this week, and we're going to talk about it week seven. Still got a Monday night football game. And there's nothing what quite nothing voice? quite like counting on the Raiders. Yeah, uh that voice was just me white knuckle waiting until the end of that game to be uh, over. I need Amon Ra to not get to nineteen points. Ah uh, so uh, well, I need Jared Goff to not go thirty four points. Okay. Which he, I believe he has done a couple times already. Now is he not your quarterback? He is this is two this is there's League of Record, and then there's the main dynasty. League of Record pff, locked up, bros. Uh, but the dynasty, I am against Jared Goff. 34, huh? Uh, so right if around he there. goes crazy with Amon Ra, you too. Yo, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Solo Halloween show. Yeah. You'll be looking good, though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't agree with that. <laughs> I will not be looking good tomorrow or the rest of the week. Let's put it that way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I should have time- I, w- I wish I would have timed it up better with leaving for a few days. <laughs> so- I- you know what I mean? I mean, it's sure. But um, we got to do uh, Halloween on a Friday next year, maybe. Uh, we'll t- we'll talk to some yeah, people. Yeah, we'll talk. We to got some, some poll. We can move national holidays. You guys want to react to the weekend? We've got uh, let's go. We've got Monday Pun Day. <laughs> yes. Let's start with the good. Yeah. Like CD Lamborghini. CD's points. <laughs> Oh, how about Dak Impresscott? Oh, like impressive? Yeah. That's a good uh, one. DeAndre Hopwins. Ooh, DeAndre Hat Trick. Or yes. Trey My Bride. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know. What? No, you sold it. You did it well. Uh, why don't you take a ride on the Magic <laughs> School Gus? <laughs> uh, Win Levis? Yes, Ooh-wee. yes. But also sad with, it's back, Alexander Sadison. What about crap trick Mahomes? <laughs> yeah, get him. Tanked Dell. C- Chris Nolave. Oh, man, he's... Mm. Yeah. Cooper Yuck. Oh, and puke Nakua. <laughs> or how about Ramondre Steven Sucks? <laughs> That's my favorite one. <laughs> my favorite one when I read to him. I, I hadn't seen yeah, it. Yeah, this is then. the best. Mike, you should never <laughs> preview these. Uh, like uh, Tony Poolard. Yeah, Tiny Pollard. All uh, right. Mm. Steven sucks. <laughs> yeah. Ramondre Steven sucks. Right on the nose, man. 
Right on the nose. Sometimes it's almost <laughs> too easy. Remember, this, these are all. That fruit is on the ground. It's not, <laughs> it's not even on the tree. It's not even hanging. Yeah. It's just low fruit. <laughs> well, those all, you know, Foot Clan submissions. Thank you. Those came in from Instagram at Fantasy Footballers and from uh, Twitter. Or, sorry, the artist formerly known as Twitter. Nice. At yeah, the FF Ballers. And, uh, you know, it's a cathartic way to deal with the weekend, the good and the bad. I, I saw a lot of negative, but, I mean, we had some good in there, too. There was a lot of points yesterday. There were a lot of points. I am going to lose both of my ma major leagues with sufficient point totals to have a victory. And that is, um, well, that's fantasy football, isn't mm -hmm, it? Mm -hmm. I, I commented and saw so many people reacting to the fact that last week I had 77 points dropped on me by Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. This week, that combo combined for 16 total points between Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. And so, yeah, because you all should have known mm -hmm. play the Denver defense like this guy. Oh, man, that's right. In your, <laughs> I forgot about that. That's your defense in DraftKings. Yeah, it was. Wow. Stone Cold minimum. That was the one place I won this week, is I won the, the prize of not being the wheel of shame. Did you, Jay? I did not, but it's mm. all right. It's all okay. right. I, yeah. I got wins just about everywhere else. So long as I'm in raw, does not get 19 points. Don't do it. Let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Speaking of Amon Ra, St. Brown added to the injury report on Sunday with an illness. Questionable for Monday Night Football. That was what doomed Patrick Mahomes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or it feels like there's like a Pat Sick. No, no. Pat yeah. Sick Mahomes? Yeah, I mean. Pat Sick? Yeah, that no. works. I mean, it, he didn't. The Denver defense has been better. Yes. Not just this week. Like, they've been better for a while now. And it's tough because you still see them on the schedule and you slam play everybody against them. But mm -hmm. this is why on our website, if you go to the Foot Clan tools, we added like last five, last three, last seven in terms of being able to filter the consistency charts and our stream finder tools because you know 170 point matchup from against the dolphins literally will define the entire year if you're only viewing in that broad broad view mm -hmm. so it is um yeah it, it, they've been a lot better and and they pretty much dominated the Kansas City Chiefs first road divisional loss for Patrick Mahomes ever mhm mm which doesn't make sense that he could have been 16-0 on the road in division, but he was. It, yeah. only, it only took the flu and 20-degree weather to finally slow him down. Wonderful combination. Yeah. You know, I, I like being out in the freezing cold when I have the flu. Dude, I cannot imagine. I was talking on Sunday Live, and it's like when you're at home and you have the flu and, like, you got to go downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Too like, much. No, they're like that. That place doesn't exist anymore. This, I am in this space and this space alone. And then this guy's like, "No, I'm gonna go play football." And he's probably feeling real bad today. Oh, he <clears throat> probably feels terrible because he's a loser. <laughs> Two thousand nine hundred and sixty-four days for the Broncos. Wow. Kirk Cousins. Day. Oh, that's major, stinks. major news. Tore his Achilles. The Vikings are four and four. They had a cupcake schedule coming up. They would have been in the mix. They're in fact they're in the playoffs right now. Yeah. And so, you know, there's going to be rumors about them trading for a quarterback before uh, tomorrow, which is our deadline. It, it seems more likely that they try to survive while Nick Mullins returns, because Nick Mullins is going to be their guy. Now, right now they have a, a fifth round rookie, Jaron Hall, and they have Sean Mannion who. I mean, you. I'd rather go down with the rookie than Sean Mannion. And Nick Mullins is eligible to return week ten. So it's so. more. I mean, that's the most likely outcome. But this is a, this is not just a huge blow for the Vikings fans. This is a huge blow for Jordan Addison managers. A huge blow yes. for Justin Jefferson managers. Yeah. This is what you feared at the end of the year. One of the reasons why dynasty questions around Addison versus Flowers or Addison versus you know JSN like quarterback. Question marks. You just don't know what you're going to get. Yeah, you you expect it to be much more <clears throat> difficult for the Vikings to have victories, which makes it less 
likely that Jefferson comes back quickly. Hawkinson. I mean, mm-hmm. every, everybody across the board just takes a massive blow. Like, you're going to start Hawkinson next week because he's a tight end and you don't have any choices. And outside of him, I, I, I you, I'm terrified. Like, I, yep. Addison will be on my bench even though he's great. It just it, it they stinks. Were, they were second in pass rate, third in total passes per game, and that is just plain not going to be the case moving forward. They they can't do that. And Cam Akers, you know, didn't have a really good game, got into the end zone. Madison was Sadison, but both those guys are going to get more run, I think. Yep, they you will. You agree with that? No, I, I agree. They will have to. They will have to lean on the run game. And there was, you know, a stint in there where they were really having success with with Madison, you know, being like a – just like a, a type of a grinder. And long-term, this is really brutal. You know, I believe this is Cousins – final year of guaranteed money I think he had, the deal is like technically some void years but he will have to resign and he will be resigning you know while recovering or maybe we look over at what Aaron Rodgers is doing because he's like each week we get more and more video of him throwing like on the field now he's moving move like move like I'm- walking around throwing a football so maybe there's maybe Aaron Rodgers and all of his personal research he found some something that worked well and, and the truth is if you really dig into that situation you know that there's a lot of attention given to uh the alternate science and all of that stuff the truth right. is is he went to the foremost <laughs> like leader in achilles surgery in the world where kobe went to have his faster recovery right and and where they're pioneering some some techniques to heal faster and he's putting in all the effort and whatever uh see, you know secret serums or whatever right he's putting in all the effort to get back and look when i see him moving around i'm like please don't i'm like oh my gosh you're gonna hurt yourself <laughs> that's what i keep thinking i i do think there's a chance they will look around I, or at backup quarterbacks and it's like could you get jacoby Brissett for relatively cost efficient because look at the vikings here's what the defense has done the past Five weeks, 10 points allowed by Green Bay, 17 to San Francisco, 13 to Chicago, 27 to Kansas City, which it's the chase. Hey, hey, that ain't too bad. That's not too bad against a, a healthy Patrick Mahomes. 13 points to the Carolina Panthers. I mean, it, this isn't just Atlanta it, beatable, New the, Orleans beatable, right. Denver beatable, Chicago beatable, and their Raiders beatable. They are in the division. The defense is playing much, much better. Like, this is a team that. If things bounce in the right direction, they have a chance in the playoffs. So it there is probably Mullins. I agree with that, but I, it wouldn't shock me that they're going to peek around. I would have brought up Heineke's name, but he had to take over this past yeah, weekend. Did. I would have brought up Tannehill's name, but he's recovering from injury, so you're like, is this guy going to get back to help you? Uh, Matthew Stafford also injured his right thumb in the loss to the Cowboys. The team is not ruling out IR for Matthew Stafford, and oh, this man. was the red alert to start the year. Mm-hmm. This was the before Cup hurt himself. It was why Cup is a risk. Yeah, and this would be more devastating to Puka Nakua than it would be Cooper Cup, and it would be devastating to both. But there is just something about Matthew Stafford running this offense, them finding the places in the zone. I mean, he might not be able to grip the football. Yeah, I mean, this is this is very similar to the Viking situation where. In the meantime, while Stafford is away, it is going to be very difficult to trust any uh, receiving options there whatsoever. They have their bye week in two weeks, so it it makes sense if he doesn't go on IR, you're still not going to have – basically, you know, like if you've got Puka, no, you don't. No, <laughs> not for a couple weeks. Right. Yeah, and, and I saw another pun was Cooper a couple bad games in a row. I mean, it was yeah. – it's been – Mm-hmm. Um, a challenge. So I saw a puke in the cup. Uh, puke in the cup. Oh, yeah, because, oh, that's, you know, hey, they super, both, they both right. uh, had a down week. Super gross. <laughs> super gross. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kenny Pickett left the game against the Jags with a rib injury. He looks like he'll be a game time decision mm-hmm. next week potentially. And you know, he Mike Tomlin said the door is ajar for Pickett to play. That's nice. That offense did not look good. Nope. Drake London exited with a groin injury. Desmond Ritter, concussion, checked for it. 
Yeah, cleared he, protocol, did not return. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan Gannon said, Josh Do – so let's talk about this, Mike. I want your right. take because instantaneously the Cardinals head coach, John Gannon, said that Josh Dobbs is starting in week nine. Yeah, it's – I think for, there's funny business going on. Do you? Oh, really? I'm well, as in, like, well, you, you I, think that he's, that he's just I could bluffing? Be, I just think that – no, no, no. I think there's no chance Kyler starts, but I think that there's a chance Kyler just stays on pup. Like, this season is now – they have the number one pick right now. And there's a huge risk financially to letting Kyler Murray play because if he gets injured again, he has uh, tons of guarantees come into play. Okay, I got you. And it's weird to me. Like, sure, maybe he didn't like the questions from the press conferences all week long and just didn't want to deal with them, so he just rules them out. But that that means that he's ruled out. Like, that means that the team knew going into this week – he would be ruled out for next week, even though heading into this week it was we'll see if he plays on Sunday. So, like, there's something behind the scenes that this team knows that we don't know there's, because there's no reason to rule him out immediately after the game unless you knew it earlier in the week, which you could have told us. There's – I mean, he – as evidence of the beginning of the season, Gannon thinks that there is some game – like, he's playing gamesmanship stuff. So, it well, he is, was. It, Why isn't he doing it this no, week? I get it. But, I maybe he's just tired of it, and they knew. I mean, the plan that we had heard before all of this like rush of optimism was the the optimism was coming from mostly our side. I know he was being coy of like, well, we'll see if he plays this weekend. But in Arizona, everything we were hearing was the of they're going to take the time. He won't play this past week. He's not going to play the next week. But then he should be back after that. I get that they're. There is huge implications for the team in the in terms of Murray's contract, but I, I'm I'm believing them that that Kyle even if they have the first overall pick, Kyler's their guy. Do you think? And the, then they will just use the first pick, the first overall pick, to cash out and do a huge, uh, get a ton of first round assets because Caleb Williams is going to be, he will draw a ton in a trade. It's it's almost even more valuable for the Cardinals to. It's the you know like in dynasty football we always say like a player a a known player is a, is often more, worth more than the that the first round pick because the first round pick could suck even though it seems like they're locked in you know, nope there's a chance they're bad so why not go with Kyler rebuild the team real quick with that first overall yeah pick. I don't I don't think he's getting traded and I don't I just think that when you look at the strategy of the team fantasy players need to know that like from a strategy standpoint the, is better that the Cardinals don't risk their future quarterback and get the first pick. Yeah. I mean, they're going to lose to the Browns next week. Yeah. I, I think Kyler's back the following week against the Falcons. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, that would be, that would be the one to target. And he did come out and talk about that game and said, he's not willing to commit to anything yet. Tyrod Taylor exited the game rib injury. Yeah. He had to go to hospital, man. Yeah. The uh, good news this morning, Daniel Jones cleared for contact. He'll be back at oh, quarterback. He, if if you watched, you could actually see the moment he was cleared for contact was the moment <laughs> that Tyrod uh, got bust to the, the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. It was not – they're not linked. When he was it cleared just, off the field by yes. another, some contact. Yeah. And then Tommy, a.k.a. Danny DeVito, came in <laughs> and had negative <laughs> – Negative pass yards. Yeah, because he swung it behind the line of scrimmage to Saquon every play. I mean, Saquon had 36 carries in the game. He had three uh, three receptions for zero yards, which is really cool. Um, hey, Daniel Jones coming back. PPR. Daniel Jones coming back is huge. The defense. Yes. I mean, I I brought this up last week. Like the Giants' defense is playing at an elite level. The Giants should have won the game. They should have won the game with se listen seven total passing yards for the Giants in the game. They had seven. <laughs> passing yards in the game Darren Waller got hurt immediately um and this is a problem like Darren Waller could be yes you know heading to IR for all we know at this point so Daniel Jones come on back I mean <laughs> give Wandale and Saquon a chance in this offense you, I don't like you know we talk about like when you have a small pie and you have to split it up a couple ways Splitting up seven yards. Is <laughs> Splitting up, you can't split seven <laughs> yeah. into a piece that would give you any sustenance. I would have to verify it, but I think Darren Waller was the leading receiver because he technically he had four receiving yards. Impressive. There's no way he's not. <laughs> well, one that's catch, the majority. Catch, that's the that's majority the ma of the yards. This is where you could throw out those fantasy stats like 
Darren Waller over the last week, more than fifty percent of the team's yards. <laughs> hey, I can't wait I like to. See, I'm going to see that one on Twitter today. That, that's a fun stat. Or I'm going to see it to justify starting him in a couple weeks. Uh, what else is going on? We have Curtis mm. Samuel injured. Kendrick Bourne out for the year, yeah. torn ACL, had a touchdown in the game. If you look at the snaps in New England, suddenly now mm -hmm. Demario Douglas yes. Yes. Yep. is in play and redraft because he's playing almost every snap. believe Juju did not come into the game until after the Bourne injury. And Devontae Parker left early with a concussion yep. and was like one of the guys not getting snaps anyways. Tyquan Thornton was a healthy and active. Like Demario has moved into – pole position oh, at this for, point for sure he he is he is the number one Devonte parker played 43 percent of snaps jalen rager 58 percent of snaps uh demario douglas 77 percent of snaps he is their main guy he led in in targets he led in receiving yards he led in snaps he's and and this has been a constant for them we've talked about it in the waiver wire episode i think the last two weeks as a name to pay attention to. We were talking about it in Dynasty, but you're right. It, this is redraft now. He should be a, a decent start. Will Levis is going to start Thursday night yeah. against the Steelers, so we're going to get to see him in prime time. Which? Dude. We, good work, Banana Will yeah. Will Levis made us all look real, real dumb. He made the NFL look dumb. It, I, it's only one game, but... He made his team look dumb forever <laughs> for not giving him a shot sooner third I'm, third quarterback in history to have four passing touchdowns in their first game listen it, he he played he balled out i tried very hard this morning to find anybody in the pop culture world that screamed the words banana rama <laughs> so that i could yeah i mean there's have a drop for the show which i'm gonna put this out there to the footland find me something well it's the, the band but that's what i was gonna say like all that kept coming back was these three was ladies the yeah from banana rama it's a cruel summer baby cruel summer <laughs> Which maybe that's the drop. I don't know. We got to work this out. <laughs> if Will Levis starts turning it up, we've got to, you know, bring Banana Rama back. But that the performance and the throws. I mean, the throws were yeah. especially that back corner little whip, drop it in, into the bucket. Yeah, I mean, just one game. But he it, that was very exciting. And that like, my favorite part was when everybody said, "Thanks a lot for telling us not to start Hopkins." Yeah, oh. I mean the process. The is, process was it was going to be Malik Willis and Will Levis. Yeah, so, I, I, I don't blame take anyone that out, for having what Hopkins we, on your bench. What we didn't factor in to the process was Arthur Smith and his disdain for fantasy football. And he knew we were – everyone in the world was starting the Atlanta Falcons DST. Mm -hmm. And so he, he made sure that we all looked foolish yet again because he hates us. Arthur Smith also had uh, tied in – Two, Johnny Smith, toss a pass. That play, <laughs> that that play was a clown show. Yeah, what was that? All right, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com/insurance. Let's uh, take a break. Come back with some studs. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. Uh, We'll jump in here momentarily. I will say this: like, there, our job on this show is to give you all the information, tell you the decisions we're making, get you prepared. Tell you what, this weekend, if I was facing Mahomes, Kelsey, I would have been terrified. If I was facing DeAndre Hopkins, I would have been overjoyed, mm -hmm. and I would have uh, inverted that into the pain and suffering that those that did face Hopkins had to endure. I mean, the fantasy is wild. And it's because the NFL is. I mean, on, on what, you can have a team lose and give up 70 points, and then you can have them come back and beat the Super Bowl champions a few weeks later. Yeah, it, that that game That's is right. the most indicative of of how of the parity in the NFL. You, yes. I mean, you want to talk about, like, uh, what are those pools? Those what, survivor pools? Yeah. Oh, no, doom. Get wrecked. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's true. All right, let's talk studs. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Go ahead, Jay. <laughs> I mean, if Sam Howell could play the Philadelphia Eagles every week, you would be in great shape because uh, those – I mean, number one overall this week, you know, put up 290 against them in week four on the road. That was nothing. 
That was peanuts. I mean, the the sack leader in the NFL is on pace for 4,500 yards, 28 touchdowns, 17 interceptions, 87 sacks. <laughs> but big game for Sam Hell and a uh, tough one to start him in because you just you feel like it is pure roulette with Hell. It's the uh, but it's not it's not roulette where there's like five five empty spots and one bullet. Like there's three bullets and three empty spots. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a it's a fifty percent. Uh, but you know that he has this kind of upside. He has great weapons. I think in the the right matchup, you can throw him in there. I mean, three hundred ninety seven yards, four passing touchdowns, and some of the. I mean, there there was a pass that just looked. It w it was one of the best passes I've seen in weeks. Uh, one of his touchdowns. Did it go to Jahan Dotson, superstar? Uh, that the eight for one oh eight and a touchdown. What in the heck? <laughs> yeah. What in the I Sam was, Hills? I was gonna say Dodson. Dodson. We've got Dodson. Yeah, here. we we have him in week eight. The uh the fact that you had nearly four hundred passing yards, and you utilized your first round wide receiver. That's not a coincidence. <laughs> I mean, who who will never know? Dodson. We is, will never know. I, I don't know if life is back in the Jahan Dodson universe. But over the last two weeks, he's on pace for 153 targets. He had yeah. eight and then 10. What in the world? Why do you do this to us? <laughs> Fantasy football? <laughs> Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, Jalen Hurts. We talked about Will Levis. Um, that performance was awesome. But I want to talk about Dak. Dak was 25 for 31, 304 and 4. He could have thrown a couple more if he wanted to. They the game do, was out of hand. They could do no wrong. I mean, the Dallas Cowboys looked so prepared, and the 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 connection between Ceedee Lamb and Dak Prescott is on fire right now. Mm -hmm. I almost traded for Ceedee Lamb last week because it just seemed like after the bye, this team would figure out the things that work a little bit better. Dak was brought up in Hungry for More by Mike, I believe. Oh, my second half sleeper. Second half sleeper. Yeah. That's what. It, yeah, I mean. Talking about the schedule, plays Philly, who Sam Hell Sam Hell just eviscerated. Um, then a tougher matchup against the Giants, but then you've got Carolina. Like the second half for Dak is very good. Mm -hmm. And they're not. I mean, to be fair, Tony Pollard, like they aren't running the ball well. Like Tony Pollard has, like over 120 carries without a touchdown in a row, or touches without a touchdown. Justin Herbert, mo monster game against Chicago. I think he started 15 for 15 in that game. Did it with uh, banged up Joshua Palmer. Huge. Huge looked okay. Did Huge? he? Yeah, he had, uh, I think he had 50 yards, caught uh, most of his. Did he look okay to you? Yeah, he looked okay. Was it relative to pre previous yeah, I mean, Huge? Yes. I mean, I'm not saying he looked like a superstar, but he was – uh, you Would know, you start him if Joshua Palmer was out? Yeah, he was five for fifty. Yeah, five for fifty. What on six targets? I think. Yes. Yeah. Plays seventy. Plays the Jets next week on the road. Yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was a huge game by his standards. Right. Tua, pretty good game for Tua against New England, who had held him in check in uh, the earlier part of the year. Plays Kansas City in Germany next week. Mm -hmm. Bonjour. A nice early morning game. But Mike, that, your quarterback, you know? I Yeah, I did just – Andy and I made a trade. We made a trade in part because I picked Dak up off of waivers, and I decided, yeah, I was you know dumb. what? I should have picked up Dak. Did you not know this? Uh, you knew that trade happened this I morning. did not. Huh? No. no, I traded him uh, Pacheco, too. Oh. Yeah. Well, I'm in. All right, I guess you're, you're buying. <laughs> yep. <sighs> Running backs, <laughs> the Gus bus oh, got his. it done. <laughs> beep, beep. I mean, I could hit that three times. Uh, three touchdowns against Arizona start of the week. Got it done at the expense of uh, Zay Lamar. Flowers yeah. and Lamar. and But the Gus Bus handling it. He's averaging 17 opportunities per game, and he's the RB6 and RB1 the last two weeks. And I can tell you right here that Papa Josh would not have a victory this week without the Gus Bus. Absolutely. Also, uh, Lamar Jackson, tap pass. Look into it. Okay, okay. Just say I'd I'd love look if I'm at the goal line too. I would love to have Gus Edwards because I think that he's a great goal line back. He's he's a beast of a man. But just you know, look just, into the tap pass. They yeah. need to learn. Just drop how, it into his. They hands. need to learn how to do the tap pass 
On a regular handoff? On a regular handoff. Like, wait until he's ahead of you. And then... Oh, you do the behind the back. <clears throat> but the running back gets behind, like, puts his hands behind you. Oh. So that way you can kind of toss. Just... I mean, you got to learn how to catch it backwards. Yeah, that's that's pretty tough. What if you just, like, toss it over your shoulder? Oh, no, that's a lateral still. Yeah. It has yeah. to be a forward pass. What well, if... We can figure this out. What if you take the shotgun snap 20 yards back? <laughs> <laughs> like a punter, and then throw it to your running back standing in his normal spot. Yeah. We figured is it that, out. If you did that, that throw is still negative yards. It's a negative three-yard throw, isn't Correct. it? Correct. Yes. But it would if, be if forward. They were, if they were tackled right there, then yes. All right. Christian McCaffrey. Oh, he's so good. At this point, what's nice is he has t a touchdown in 17 straight games. Unstoppable. But he breaks the record with 18, so you know. Like, oh, oh, for yeah. sure. They're going to. Go for that. He's going to get a touchdown on his bye week. He might get one next week, yeah. Alvin Kamara. It's just six points. Uh, Alvin Kamara was a monster. Yep. I, I heard uh, on SiriusXM the debate of like, okay, Christian McCaffrey's the running back one, period. Like, obviously. But then it was like, who's two? Who is number two? And Alvin Kamara is at least in the conversation. In the yeah. He has not been outside of RB1 territory since he's been back. He he has so many targets, and he's looked really, really good. Yeah. I, I wouldn't put him at two, but he is good enough to be in that conversation. Let me, let me ask you a really difficult question that, that other people may be considering in Dynasty Leagues because Alvin Kamara Dynasty commodity is not a right. commodity. No. However, I was offered last week uh, Alvin Kamara and a little bit of extra for Josh Jacobs, who's 25 years old. Ooh, and wow. I'm in I, I'm in a season where I could have won a championship. Or I could win a championship. Right. Although I did lose to Jason this week. Sorry about that. Because Jason I he had <laughs> a, Jason had every single player yep. on his team score a touchdown, and Jason had almost every one of them score in a five minute span. It was insane. It was in a, I mean, it was like he has Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts threw two touchdowns, one to Devontae Smith, who he has. Waddles grabbed a touchdown. ETN scored a touchdown. Andrew scored a touchdown. All it was right next Bijan to Bijan scored a touchdown, and I looked up in our game. Like I'm gonna score 150 points. Yeah, no, and I'm go I'm gonna get blown out. But anyways, sorry. What would you do in that situation? Because obviously Josh Jacobs is young enough to be a valuable asset in Dynasty for a long period of time, whether it's with this team or another team. Like I don't think any of us are swapping Saquon for Kamara right now in a Dynasty, are we? No. So then, what do you do in that? Like, are you? <laughs> Do you believe enough in Alvin Kamara rest of season to try to buy a title with him? Because if he's in contention for the number two running back, I mean, he's come back to – he's averaging uh, how many – 150 targets in the games he's been back. I, I, I don't, I don't want to I don't want to say – Because you're afraid I'll go do it? You have to do that deal. You have to. I mean, I, I don't want you to because you are easily the – the biggest competition for me in in our in our dynasty league. Your team is excellent. Um, in fact, I told Mike that that morning. I was like, "How does I know you had a loss?" But I was like, "How does anybody beat Andy's team?" Um, apparently, you just go nuclear. <laughs> yeah, everyone on your team scores. That, that um, that's how you do it. But I would hate for you to make that trade right now. Camara is still under contract for a couple more years. Um, he would be. They can get out, but they can get out next year. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know that they would. I don't know that they want to. But just saying, next year a post. If I'm seeing it right on over the cap, a post June first would turn into just a 1.6 dead cap. And if you don't do it that, then you're you're in with Kamara for the next couple of years. Wait, but which Kamara's? And I get you know how long was the the uh, uh, like Derek Carr contract? It was a couple of years, right? Uh, I believe it was a couple yes, of years because yes. that's what it is. This production is. Kamara's been incredibly inefficient on the ground. We have a, we have a full four weeks in a row of averaging 3.6 yards per carry. It's not a perfect stat, of course, but he's getting so much volume, but it's it's all these targets. I mean, Derek Carr is – Derek Carr cannot stop himself from checking down <laughs> to Kamara. Yeah. So he's like, I don't – I can't. I don't want to do it. No, but there he is. I think he's, I see him again. Well, and it's working. And even afterwards, I think he he makes the completion to Kamara and then goes, "Ah, I did it again." <laughs> yeah. All right, but, in the huddle, yes. Kamara, it's not going to you. Then he sees him. Like, yeah. Oh. So I mean, and then I told somebody this past so week. Beautiful. I was like, Travis Etienne, he can't keep scoring touchdowns like this. He did it again. <laughs> yeah. He has seven touchdowns in four weeks. 
This game looked like, I mean, he left the game with an ankle injury. I thought I caught a break in a couple of leagues. Comes back, 56-yard receiving touchdown. Yeah, he's a, a month straight of being a top five running back. So, uh, Austin Eckler. Hey, welcome back. Yeah, big receiving day. That was a uh, really nice see. Was very inefficient on the ground, but Eckler's superpower has always been the receiving work. Um, w while you don't have Mike Williams, obviously rest of season, you got a banged up Palmer. Eckler's going to be great through the uh, through the air. Next week, a much more difficult uh, journey uh, on the road against the Jets. But, I mean, you're still going to play him. I think he's going to be great. Rest of season, uh, he's got a two-week very difficult stretch. After that, Free it, is, it is. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the wheels are up and the plane is flying. Javante Williams, Jason, you asked me this morning, how many carries did Javante have? <laughs> yeah. I was like, 10? No. 20? No. 27. 27 I mean, the game carries. script was something Denver is unfamiliar with. Right. Massive lead, five <laughs> turnovers, short fields, waste the clock, but... Cold weather, keep Mahomes on the sideline. I don't think this is going to be super common. Obviously, 27 carries is a very uh, outrageous number. However, what it does say is, as he's gotten back to health, Andy, you brought this up last week. I didn't think that we would see kind of a, a transition to him really being the, the 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 full lead focal point of the running back room. But it seems like that might happen. Now they're going on bye this week. So coming out of the bye a, a little bit more time since that injury, giving him a massive workload, I'm I'm very interested in, in Javante. Let's go to wide receiver. CeeDee Lamb, 14 targets, 12 for 158. He was so good. If you if you didn't see that game, the the stat line is awesome. Two touchdowns. The stat line is awesome, but the stat line is still not even good enough. He was just he was so much better than everybody. He would have been over two hundred if this game had any competitive fire over the back half. Forty one percent of teams' targets. I I I'd, obviously, like I said, I almost traded for him. I went and looked at the game log from the previous weeks, and it was just kind of like. So blasé. It was so like, is this team not yeah. believe in C.D. Lamb? I don't understand it. Like, it's not like Brandon Cooks and Michael Gallup and Jake Ferguson are moving the football very often. So they went back to what got them there. Hopkins, four for one, twenty-eight and three. <laughs> you playing him against Pittsburgh on Thursday? Uh, I guess Probably. so. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Pittsburgh is a great matchup, uh, and they they lost Mika Fitzpatrick. Oh. So that I mean, yeah, Hopkins will be in your lineup. Rashid Shahid, this is a bigger, broader discussion. You want to stay in the Saints? There's lots to talk about. Sure. Um, I figured we'd be talking about it in a different part of the show under Chris Olave, but you know, I've watched the mic'd up version of Derek Carr, and um, you know, he gets to the sideline, he gets the playbook, he asks to take a shot. He's not asking for Olave. He's asking for Shahid. They have something special. All of his shots. A lot of his shots are to Shahid, and they work. And then his shots to Olave have not worked at all. And he's he seems frustrated with Chris Olave. I it did, didn't help that Olave took a wide open ball off the helmet. I th I think there is just there there is some disconnect between Olave and Derek Carr right Absolutely. now because there was there was that play which was as is if Chris Olave turns around. It's an easy catch. It's a walk in. He was turned around. Uh, he didn't turn around at the right time. He turned. A, he turned around, faced the football in perfect timing. But his, uh, you you couldn't tell because the camera. His eyes had to be closed. His so, eyes. I'll, I'll watch it again. But my take on it after watching it was the ball was in the air before he turned, and I he must have just lost it. So, but this was a touchdown. This was a great throw. Olave should catch a normal wide receiver should catch this go into the end zone, and. If I'm not mistaken, I think there was a play right after that where it was a terrible throw, and then Olave was met. So I think well, they're, they, they're both just getting mad at each other. I agree. Is what it seems like, and it's two it's weeks a ago he, gave, he thing. gave up on the route. Yes, even though the ball was bad. Yeah, like, but Carr was furious with him, and like I said, I've watched the sideline stuff. It's like, hey, I want to run this play for Shahid. I want to run this play for Shahid. Like three for one fifty three. It's funny because those were his only three targets. Yeah. He only played twenty seven percent of snaps. It's like a you remember Marvin Robert Mims. I was gonna say you remember Robert Meacham? Sure. He used to do that stuff. It was like deep shot, nothing else. Yeah, I, I had someone uh asking me about starting Shahid. I told them not to. 
you know, it, whoops. Yeah. Um, but it was, you know, Shahid has had – his bad games are, you know, if he doesn't catch a long bomb, it's 28 total yards, 28 total yards, 33 total yards, and and uh, he, he's not playing a ton of snaps. So, it's tough. I, I mean, would, are you picking up Shahid because – of the the bombs no, and the he, connections, no, he's, he's a, the uh, pick up a guy on Sunday morning because someone gets hurt like Palmer, and then throw him in your lineup and pray. Right. Didn't you face Shahid this week, Papa Josh? <laughs> that, had, that had to feel real good. Oh, it sucked. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because nothing like getting beat by a guy that you're like, yeah, I'm glad he's in the lineup. Jalen Waddle, twelve targets, seven for one twenty one. Tyreek Hill, thirteen targets, eight for one twelve. Monster performances. They're great. You should play them always. Jahan Dotson, 10 targets. He was Come great. On. Come Ma on. McLaurin was 5 for 63 and a touchdown. Two he only real bad drops. He only caught 5 of 12 targets. That's what I was going to say. There was a couple plays that I was like, that's not Terry McLaurin. Right. Jamar Chase, an even 10 for 100 and a touchdown. Which if we didn't mention it in the, the quarterback se section, but for Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow had 43 rushing yards. Like, the dude was running around. This is a healthy Joe Burrow. I, we're back, baby. I think we are back that the Bengals are going to start putting up the points. Design draw on like third and 10 and uh, ran it for like 14, 15 yards. It was awesome. Bounce back performances from Devontae Smith, seven for 99 and a touchdown. And, and he was uh, open. He was only open by about 20 yards on that play. <laughs> yeah. And uh, A.J. Brown, still good. Still over 125. Still over 125. Just He is just a manimal out there. I heard him called the Decepticon this weekend. <laughs> and I was like, that that's a better – like, he's not a Transformer. He's a Decepticon because that dark mask and the way he grimaces after a catch, like, I'm afraid of him. Yeah. Oh, he is He is a terrifying human being. Just I, – I, I feel like if he, if he walked into a room – and just like kindly came up and said, "How's it going?" I would be in the corner crying. <laughs> say, you're too, you're too big and strong. I think he might, he might be able to take DK Metcalf now. Ooh, yeah. I don't know. Speaking of that, he's the wearing his own uniform for Halloween, Brooks. <laughs> yep, yeah, that's what I would. If I was AJ Brown, I'd just dress up as myself. Yeah, uh, terrifying. <laughs> that's good. Tyler Lockett. Can I switch my costume to AJ Brown? <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice try. You're gonna need some muscles. Tyler, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fair. And not just some, uh, all of them. Tyler Lockett, from is he going to play? To nine targets, eight for eighty-one, and a touchdown. Uh, what do you What do you do with this guy? What do you do with the whole Seahawks? Because sure. that that room is is kind of crazy. You had DK Metcalf, um, who missed the previous week, come and he had. Do, do you know DK Metcalf's line? Are you? I, I don't off the top of my head. I watched him not catch a bunch of targets. Okay, that's exactly right. That's Whoa! how, that's how his, it looked. His line was five for 67. What? How many targets do you think he had for those five receptions? <sighs> you're too low. It's, you're too low. 12? 14? Oh, gosh. He had 14 targets. I watched him. What I, happened? I watched him constantly. You know, he's getting kind of uh, – he drew some PIs, mm -hmm. you know, which is something that counts for nothing. But, uh, hmm. And you had the rookie get a touchdown again, JSN. Yep. I did it. Uh, what did you do? I knew. I knew. Oh, did you do the Camara trade? Oh, this is the worst. <laughs> I a knew it. Show Come on, man. You folks on the show. This is why when the when the questions started coming up, I was like, oh, this. Because go I know it. I'm going to make him do it. It's the right move, and I absolutely hate this for our league. I hate it for having to face you. We'll find out what happens. Trey McBride, 14 targets, 10 for 95. Start of the week, Trey McBride. Hey. And expect more of this. I mean, when you have a team that's throwing the ball to the tight end as much as Arizona was, which is exactly what we said on Thursday, Friday, you're throwing to, and you consolidate it to one athletic target. Like this is, he broke the record, by the way. For most receptions in a game by an Arizona Cardinals tight end in history. Nobody's ever had that. And that's just 10. But, um, you know, he's he's one of three tight ends. So Gronk and Aaron Hernandez to record 14 plus targets in a game at age 23 or younger. So maybe this guy 
opens up for Trey McBride. Yeah, maybe, hopefully we're not getting fooled because he did have a game uh, last year where he was like 7 for 70 with a score, and then they buried him again. But this is this is who he's supposed to be. He was a second-round pick. He was the first tight end drafted in his class. He had a dominant final season in college. Like This is who he should be, so fingers crossed. And Taysom Hill, only one target. But ends up with two touchdowns. Yeah, the the rushing work was up for him. The the goal line carries, so you can buy into that as a possibility. But Juwan Johnson was back, and Juwan Johnson was was taking the the the, the routes away from Taysom. Yeah, I, I I absolutely love that it worked. You know, we we had people pick him up. We had people play him. He was my start of the week. But I am not confident now that we we saw Juwan back and we saw the. The route participation completely disappear. So going forward, he's always someone you can start because of the rushing touchdown upside that exists. And in a matchup against Chicago, you could see that again, but he is not someone that I am super bullish on repeating performances. Quick shout out to Jacob Gibbs at J A Gibbs underscore twenty three. Gibbs. He was the one who shared that quote about the Gronk Hernandez uh Trey McBride situation. Kittle, you can get uh, a lot from Kittle when you have no Debo, no Debo, and a negative game script, and now what? Three straight losses for the old Forty yes, ers Yes, I don't mind that. <laughs> they are you actually guys, not in first place yeah, gonna in ask. the NFC West. The Seahawks are leading Come the division. On. Yeah, the Forty ers looked unbeatable three weeks ago. I, unbeatable three weeks ago. I was like. I should go put a bet on the 49ers going undefeated. Oh, <laughs> did you? No. Oh, thank goodness. No, I, I did not, but it was looking at this team, looking at their schedule, because it was Cleveland against a backup, then it was the Vikings, and then you know the Bengals who had been struggling. <laughs> but the NFL is it's a funny place. Um, Yeah. Yeah, wow. 49ers. That, that interception he threw down near the goal line, Jason, mm -hmm. did you see that one? Uh, where Purdy rolled right and then he just threw it. It was the lineman catch that you love. Yes. Oh, I do remember Jason that. Jason yes. always had a dream in our flag football leagues that he would just catch the ball as the lineman putting his hands up and pick six it. Yes, just just while running towards the quarterback to sack him, just grab the ball out of the air when he throws it over you and how's it? Uh, Hawkinson did great. Maybe it's a bon voyage to tight end three, I, but he should still be heavily involved. Tight end three, probably not because of, of touchdowns, but he's going to – he'll be peppered. David Njoku looked real good this week. He did. If he you looked, watched that game, he looked awesome. Yeah, he he super athletic, lots of targets. I was surprised he only ended up with four receptions, but, yeah, no, he was, he was uh, very active. He, I mean, he looked hard to tackle. Fergie got into the end zone, four for 47. Yeah, baby. The catch was awesome. It was like a play so athletic. I was like, that can't be Jake Ferguson, is it? <laughs> and it was. The uh, connection between him and Dak have been, has been really, really strong um, lately, and I, I think you stay in the flames with Fergie. Cole Komet, 10 for 79 with Bajent. Yeah. Logan Thomas back into the end zone. Dalton Kincaid had the good Thursday night. All right. The not so good. Pooped in his big boy pants. Last week's superstars, Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, the pants were too big. Yeah. yeah I mean, that... Lamar threw for 157-1 and one against the Cardinals. And to be fair, the Cardinals were in the game. They scored 17 fourth quarter points. They got an onside kick that would have put them with a chance to win the game or tie the game had they gotten the two-point conversion. Yeah, it was a very disappointing performance from a, a quarterback that you thought was going to be a complete smash. But also, when you have three rushing touchdowns, mm -hmm. it's very difficult. You know, Gus Edwards basically ruined Lamar Jackson's fantasy day if those touchdowns, you know, they, they scored enough points as an offense. Yeah, 31. How many teams play in your standard fantasy football league? Well, I, th I think 12 is probably the standard. And the norm. second most is 10. 10, right. Yeah. If I told you that um, <clears throat> one time this year Trevor Lawrence finished inside the top 10 at the quarterback position mm. in eight starts, would you believe me? 
Because Jason Trevor Lawrence would is, be very shocked. Trevor Lawrence is going on the bye, and the question now is, do you drop Trevor Lawrence? Because if Dak's there, you do. Am I right? You, you do. Am I drop, right? Okay, Mike wants. To, is there like a <laughs> victory lap he could take? I, I mean, will be taking it. Do, do you want to go around the <laughs> table, Mike? I got these headphones. Okay. Otherwise, I would. You are dunking on the fact that Trevor Lawrence was expensive in drafts and Dak was free and Dak has been better and Dak will be better. Mm -hmm. And if Dak is on waivers, I think all three of us would now agree. Yes. It's Dak Prescott. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Mike doesn't go. need to say anything because the, <laughs> oh, the players have said it themselves. I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> now, the the irony of it is is that Trevor Lawrence is, and, the, and Jacksonville are dominating in terms – like they've won five consecutive games. And he's – Playing well, and the 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 offense looks good. It's Travis Etienne, man. Yes, it it really is. And what's crazy too is they're gonna they go on by, San Francisco goes on by, and then we come out with Jacksonville, San Francisco in Jacksonville after the bye week. For San San Francisco is gonna be like that's gonna be a tough game. Yeah, it's could you like, imagine I would, if they I, lose that and they lose four in a row? I will bet that the line of that game is, it's like pick them. I bet it's like I bet I bet it's Jacksonville minus point five. Oof. And but, I don't. I mean, we don't have it yet. But. It's it, it is it, totally Travis Etienne. It's look at the situation of Dallas. The the complete lack of scoring that Tony Pollard has had. If that flipped with like, the way that Etienne is producing, then there's no way Dak is putting up numbers. We had a very good starts of the week week here on the show, but one of them did not perform. C.J. Stroud, sixteen for twenty four, one forty, and nothing. If you played Stank Dell. You didn't get anything. If you played yeah. Nico Collins, you didn't get anything. So it was really a slog. You know, you, you tuned into this game with four minutes left. It was 13-12. Not what you hoped for in the battle of the rookie quarterbacks. Tony Pollard, 12 for 53. Gross. In a game that really should have had a lot of Tony Pollard. Um, Tony Pollard's longest run. Let me read this to you. 13 yards. The week before, longest run. Seven. The week before, longest run, 10. The week before, longest run, 16. This is playing out exactly like Lamar Miller mm -hmm. when he was in Miami, when everything was an explosive play, and then he becomes the bell cow. This team was supposed to be predicated on the running game. And I'm not saying Tony Pollard, Pollard is bad, but I think if I told you eight weeks into the season that you have a running back that has – uh, not scored at all since week one is 3.9 on the ground in this, you know, heralded rushing McCarthy right. offense. And even worse, he's not catching a ton of passes. Yeah, he, he is. Uh, he has not been good for fantasy football the last five weeks. He is the running back 33. He has fewer fantasy points than Tajay Spears and Najee Harris. And uh, what? Demarcado. What did you just say before that? <laughs> Whose Na name did Najee, you utter? Na Najee Harris has more fantasy points than Tony Pollard over the last five weeks, That's... and Najee has not been good. <laughs> so he has it, been I, b -b bad. The yeah. I I do wonder about the the ankle because if the you rewind the clock, Tony Pollard had a devastating season-ending ankle injury last year, and that's why it, when it was. He got the franchise tag and Zeke got shipped out. It was, oh, that's very interesting. That's a vote of confidence for Tony Pollard being able to come back. But I'm curious if that is, that's still a problem for him. I mean, the first three weeks it wasn't a problem, right? I mean, he started the season pretty strong. He looked like one of the best fantasy picks, you know, when, when you were heading into week four. You can still wear down. 65% of snaps, obviously the blowout script. I mean, he's out there. And, and he's probably a trade for Canada if somebody is really out on him. Just because he's the bell cow of a good team, but Agreed. and we talked about the schedule, right? With Dak, like that's going to be. Actually, well, you brought it, that no, up it's, because it's, it's bad. Tough. It's bad for yes, runners. It's tough for Tony. Hmm. Any chance they bring Derrick Henry in? I I think that the if Henry is moved, it's Baltimore or Dallas. Yes. Yeah. Kenneth Walker finally had a dud, eight for sixty six, no touchdowns. Yeah. Charbonnet, fifty nine percent of snaps. It sucks. It feels bad because. He was left off the injury report, but he did miss two days with an injury. Ramondre and Zeke. Ramondre, 10 for 39 on the ground. Zeke, 7 for 36 on the ground. Four targets for Ramondre. No targets for Zeke. B -b bad Yep. 
Disappointing yeah. game. Very, Certainly. very disappointing fantasy ass, uh, output, but still still that 60-40 split we've been seeing, and um, I, I, I'm not too worried about the total performance for Ramondre S- Steven sucks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just a matter of you have a leader of a committee on a bad team. Right. That's the hardest part. Uh, Aaron Jones, I don't know if we're going to get real Aaron Jones back. There was, did you see the report that there, the the Green Bay Packers are maybe Shopping? looking for a running back? Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I did watch A.J. Dillon, so that would make sense. <laughs> I I, I thought Dillon. about putting A.J. Dillon into my hierarchy really? of least favorite players to watch play football. <laughs> which uh, Did Derek Carr, has he has – he, Move down a bit on that? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair. In part because Kamara only had five targets, which is a credit to him to throw the ball to other people. Like, I know we say he can't resist it, but, you know, three big bombs to Shahid. Mac Jones stays on the list, I think. Okay, fair. But, yeah, A.J. Dillon, nobody runs into a butt better than A.J. Dillon. He is – It's. Very, I mean, he got it done. A.J. Dillon got it done in the receiving game. Very strange. But his his ground game ha- is so disappointing to us. I have, have to imagine it is incredibly disappointing you, to the Packers. If you told me somebody the had tra- built like a, he's built like Derrick Henry. If you told me that someone trained him as a young kid to when he gets the football out of the backfield to close his eyes, scream and, and run, run straight, <laughs> I would say, yeah, I, I can see that. Yeah. yeah. Pacheco, hugely disappointing game for Isaiah Pacheco. But this, you understand why. Yep. Eight for 40, negative game script from the jump five turnovers he wasn't out on the field a lot like if you look in the second half of that game because i was looking uh there was tons of mckinnon out there yep because they were in two minute drill offense by the way i i don't know if he's, he, he's not going to show up in the wide receiver duds but i'll just mention him with pacheco rashi rice had this ball did you see this yep. one yep he had a ball in the middle of the field on a scramble from mahomes i may have been playing him and he did the so wide open that I turned my head to run because he's a great runner. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not sure he doesn't score a 60-yard touchdown on that play. So And he dropped it. He dropped it. Madison, 16 for 31. Chuba Hubbard, 15 for 28. Miles Sanders, two carries. Yeah, the, the Chuba start did end up very disappointing and was exponentially frustrating when you saw how many times they were inside the five. And it was, just give the ball to Chuba. Yeah. They, oh, they did. They gave... It, did you miss the time that they gave him three straight goal line carries? Uh, apparently, I, I did. Because they gave him three straight goal line carries, and he was stuffed, stuffed, stuffed. Yeah. It was um, – They didn't score a lot for being inside the five yeah. so much. Yeah, I, I watched the, the – it was one of the opening drives. Let me see. And, Red yeah. Zone. So, yeah, two, he had carries two carries inside, carries the, five. inside the five. Three inside the ten, two inside the five. But even with – look, I get it. Stuffed two times in a row. You want to move away for it on the in that series – but for how many times I saw them down there, Chuba should have had at least a touchdown. But he did not. All right, so the Deontay Foreman, Roshan Johnson question. It's just a hot fart mm. is the answer. Stinky? Uh, yeah, yes. it, real windy. Like, would move your hair if you had long hair. It's a fart Like in your if face. you put your head up to it? Oh, yeah. It, or no, it, it just, it's a hot fart in your face. It's a rocket fart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've all had rocket farts. Sounds like that. I mean, it, this was uh, – people asked me on Sunday morning. It's like Roshan or Thorman. Uh, Roshan by a hair? <laughs> Darrington Evans ends up with the touchdown? Yeah, what is that all about? Damian Pierce, 12 for 46, no targets. Devin Singletary, 10 for 30. Pierce did score, then it was called back. Yeah. Then he got another goal line opportunity. I don't know what Pierce's goal line success rate is this year. But it's not good. No, it is not very good. And this is going to be... Five zone carries. He's had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and he has one touchdown. He, wow. That is... Eight five zone carries. That is not But he also has a total of negative five yards on those carries. And they gave the ball... It was the fantasy football insult of all. Oh, yeah. It, was oh, the, it went the to the fullback. Full the next yep. play on fourth down, they just snuck it to Andrew Beck. <laughs> Who coaches history yeah. or teaches history at the local high school? Yeah, Arthur high fived him after that. I feel like whenever a player goes down on the like inch line, whenever they are given the touchdown in the game, 
But then upon review, it was just short. There should be a law. There should be a law that they get first dibs at that next play. Like they, you know, you're at least the first read in a route or you get the handoff. Should start awarding one point for called back touchdowns. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh. <laughs> Just for our, like, emotional <laughs> point. Yeah. It's like a, um, you know. But Damian Pierce is not involved in the passing game, and he has a 50% timeshare of a bad offense. You'd rather have Brian Robinson. Yeah, you'd rather have Brian. I mean, you think about I'm the, trying to think of some other guys that are kind of like grinders. Well, I'm I'm looking at this. There's a handful of these like 50 50. You know, th Damian Pierce might be worse than Zeke. Zeke is right getting targets. You know, he's about a 50 percent player. He's 40 percent, but like 40 percent plus That's in targets. A good point. Might, might be the the better option. He might legit be Zeke. Yeah, Chris Olave. The Chris Olave is the wide receiver 30 on the season with no buys. Wow. So when you look at Jason, maybe check on points per game for Olave and sure. see where he ranks. 30th in total points. Chris Olave this season is on pace for 1,000 yards, two touchdowns, 90 receptions. None of those are bad. One touchdown on the year is really costing him. And he gets open. He's Always. so good. Yeah. He has the seventh most I yeah, know he hasn't had the bye week, but he has the seventh most targets at the wide right receiver position. I think he is a bye. I do too. I completely do. Um, I you know I I said that before this last week. You would have been super upset if you bought him. I I don't think you will be by the end of the season. Here's a tough one. Uh, to answer your question, points per game, he is uh thirty. No, oh. he is way way lower than that. Oh, okay. <laughs> so he's thirtieth in points. Yeah, we'll get to the bottom of this. Would you trade Cooper Cup for Chris Olave? knowing the Stafford injury hey, oh, and the bye man. week coming up, and Chris Olave is underwhelming. It's not like you're trading Cooper Cup for a high commodity. I'd still keep Cup. Would, would you try to trade Cup in? Maybe it's not Olave. Would you try to get out of the – like trade the name before the backup takes over? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that maybe. Um, I, I would be, I would <laughs> be far I would be more willing with Puka. Puka, to me, is deleted until Stafford is back. I think Cup will still have relevance with a backup. So you had both Puka and Addison. Yes. Well, wait, wait where's? Leagues. Oh, that is differently. I've got Puka in the but league both record quarterback situation and Addison in in our dynasty. Um, when you get done counting, let us know. Uh, Christian Watson, a dud of a game. Honestly, the Packers. Let's take a uh, temperature oh, check on a scale I, of one to ten. Uh, Al Borland, how are you feeling about your Packers? This season, yeah, just well, no, you know, not this, like your fandom for life. I'm talking season, about right now, going into next season, four. Ooh, that's, oh, that's, that's, high, that's higher, higher than I've seen. I've seen the Packers fans saying this is the worst season of forty years. The worst. They said that at least you wanted to watch them in the past when they were bad. Uh, yeah, it's not fun to watch right now, but I do have faith that Jordan Love will get get it together. Oh wow. As what, based wow. upon what? Did you speak to somebody? <laughs> hope, Jason. I mean, Did hope. Mrs. Love give you a call? The more I watch, the more I'm like, I think we know the answer here. <laughs> I think we got it. I think we know he ain't it. Hope will do crazy things yeah. to a person. Hope and love. That is so... Just need some faith. Like, Packers fans, you were so ready to jettison Aaron Rodgers into the sun. Look what happens when your quarterback stinks. Like, it is not a fun place to be riding high with Brett Favre right there into are, Rodgers. There are 40-year-olds that don't know what it's like in New, in, in Green Bay. <laughs> right? I mean, there are 40-year-olds that don't know what it's like to lose and don't know what it's like to not have a good quarterback. Yeah. And maybe Jordan Love figures it out, but here's the thing. He's got a lot to figure out. He's got a lot to figure out. <laughs> and what what's their record now? They are 2-5. and five. The Bears are 2-6. and six. So they're just staying alive. Um, also, uh, I finished Oh, did counting. you finish counting? <laughs> uh, Christian Olave points per game is wide receiver 37. Okay. That did – right. yeah. That's not – okay. Okay. Christian Kirk didn't have the game we hoped no, for. No, he did not. Ugh. Zay Flowers was a – I mean, this was a huge dud of a game for Zay Flowers. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I've watched a lot of Baltimore. I don't know what Zay Flowers really is, but the truth is – Right now, he's worse than Olave is on the year. Like, because of the, the kind of type of player that Zay Flowers is. At least the way they're using him, yeah. 
I just don't know what his like. I have my worries. Like the the ceiling for Zay Flowers is that you know they start using him in some better ways. But the floor is you have a, this is Rondale Moore in Baltimore, mm-hmm. and you have no finishes in, as a wide receiver one this year for Zay Flowers. Um, you have one touchdown in the receiving game this year for Zay Flowers. You have a whole pile of targets, but these are like I remember when Rondale Moore had a pile of targets in Arizona and the, the yardage, right? Five catches for 19 yards. That's hard to only gain three yards. It is. That's called screen game. So I, I guess I'm I'm getting a little concerned. I think it's it's eight fair. weeks in. I think it's fair to have concerns for the rest of the season. I think the and remember the some player of his, is good. Though. Some of his games though were like Mark Andrews is hurt or Bateman and OBJ are out. And so that was something that got brought up early in the year. And we do have Here we go. Breaking news. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh. The Bills. No. Are signing. Wait a second. Leonard Fournette, the dump truck coming to Buffalo. Oh my god. Beep. Beep. Buffalo. Beep. Buffalo. Thighs like what? What are you doing, baby? Why? Lenny. Boy, that'll, that'll be a good waiver show tomorrow. Glad I traded James <laughs> Cook. <laughs> oh, man. Why? The dump truck. The man who will, like, we want more targets for James Cook. Uh-oh. Yeah. Hmm. Lenny finds a home in Buffalo. Before, I mean... Hit that drop again. Good good for you, Fournette. Okay. First reaction. Pen, I mean, pending are you gonna physical. Try to, is he worth picking up? Uh, speculatively, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, sure, yes. he, he could end up. I mean, we've been playing Latavius Murray, and if they think that he is. Well, we watched Murray get, like, stuffed up on the goal line three or four times. Yeah. Might have been enough. They're like, yeah, this old vet isn't getting it done. Let's go get <laughs> Leonard Fournette. Dallas Goddard, four for 36. Disappointing. Dalton Schultz, two for five. Disappointing. Josh Palmer, hey, he was three for 24, but he gutted it out. I mean, he I stayed can't in believe, the game. Th- when he went down for that injury, like, just it at the beginning of the game, immediately goes down, grabs the knee that was hurting him all week, is and then does the, the hop jump all the way to the blue tent. It was, how was this guy... Not ruled we have, out. Immediately. We have no details of the injury, right? Right. Is this like a bruise or something? I I'm not aware. That Weird. would make sense. That, that makes more a sense. Bone bruise. Yeah. All right. We got to wrap it up. We got a waiver show tomorrow. We have a Halloween show tomorrow. Yeah. Way to keep it keep it down. YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. I will live to regret tomorrow. But we got waiver information for you. We'll be ready to rumble. Thank you for joining us on today's show. At the FF Ballers over on Twitter. Go D backs. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.